Um, so, where do I point? Uh, you just anywhere. You oh, just click. How about the green button? <laughs> um, so, Phoenix Snap is a global infrastructure as a service provider. And can you guys hear me okay? Um, and infrastructure as a service, you know, another way to look at that is infrastructure as a cloud service, right? When I, I've, when I talk to people a lot of times and they think about cloud services, you know, particularly in an environment like Sandler, you know, I know there's a lot of success here selling services like UCAS, right? Um, security as a service uh, and so on, firewall services. Those are all services that involve the application layer, but there's a lot of applications. In fact, the majority of applications, organizations still run themselves. They don't purchase the application from somewhere else, and they, but they run it on infrastructure. And when you're talking about infrastructure as a service, think about outsourcing the infrastructure part while you still run your application on top of it. So you're thinking about things like how many virtual CPUs and how much RAM and how much storage Absolutely. And, and things like that, this stuff has to run on top of. Absolutely. Is that what you're referring to? That's right. And I'm going to talk, I got a slide right after this that I think okay. will we'll, we'll, we'll show you that. Um, but briefly, who we are, we're, we're based out of Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, we were founded in 2009. We've got 600 employees. Uh, we, we're in 17 data centers around the world, right? And you can see a list of, of, of the various infrastructure services that we sell there on the left. But um, I think this next slide will, will, will speak to it better, so I'll, I'll hold that for a second. But there's one thing I want to point out here, and this is from a presentation I was given a couple of days ago. Um, uh, there's been a recent study out there. Uh, you know, Gartner actually earlier this year came out with another study about the growth of compute, cloud computing, which is really cloud infrastructure, right? And they projected 20% annual growth year over year for cloud-based infrastructure versus 3.5% year over year for on-premise infrastructure, right? So it's, it's not even close. It's an unstoppable force that when it comes to infrastructure, organizations are looking to get out of the business of running their own, buying and securing their own, right? And in fact, by 2025, it'll be well beyond. The spend is growing, you know, 100, 100, 100 to 150 billion a year going into cloud-based infrastructure versus about 30 billion a year going into more on-prem. Right? So the opportunity is terrific out there. It's massive. And when, just to right size or, or help everybody visualize this, right? This is a chart Gartner put together of various types of delivery models for applications and the underlying infrastructure stack, right? So all the way on the left is what you have historically seen in every organization. They do everything on premise. So they have their own data center, which is where they put their own. Uh, put the all, all their network equipment and their physical servers, whatever virtualization they do on top of that, whether that's virtual machines or containers, they're managing that themselves and they're putting operating systems on those virtual machines, databases, applications, and, da and data, right? What you see as you move all the way to the right is the software as a service application where the only thing the client owns is their data and everything else is provided by the service provider. And as I said, Still today, the majority of organizations don't go that far with all their different workloads, right? So they have to find a solution for the underlying infrastructure, and that's where companies like Phoenix Nap come in, right? So those three columns, co-location, hosting, and IaaS, you'll see the light blue boxes. Those are the pieces that we offer. So if someone wants to be, they, they still want to run all their own networking and physical servers and everything else, but they just don't want to deal with having the data center that properly cools and takes care of the environmental and the physical security and everything else, that's co-location, right? We can offer that for them. If they take it a step further and they, they want to manage their VMware environment or their Kubernetes environments, but they don't want to be in the business of sourcing physical servers, which is a huge challenge these days given what's going on with supply chain, right? They can look to companies like us. You want to take it a step further, you don't want to get into dealing with the licensing and the patching and the software and everything that goes with running the virtualization environment. You just want to focus on your own you know, operating systems and applications, great, we can do that for you too. And, that's, and, and that is infrastructure as a service. Any questions yeah. about infrastructure as a service versus bare metal as a service versus co-location? Just, just out of curiosity, any, any questions so far? Okay. Good. So what I want to point out is there was a study that just came out in Q2 um, 
showing where they, they pulled people in, in IT and DevOps organizations globally, and it truly was global, um, and they, they tried to figure out market penetration of the various cloud platforms for infrastructure, right? And there was no surprise that the big three cloud providers, AWS, Google, and Azure, were ubiquitous, that 93% of the environments out there in one form or another use those, those providers. But there's another group, these groups that, of which we are one, called alternate cloud providers, ACPs. It's a term in the industry now. And collectively, there's about a dozen of us, right? Companies not just like PhoenixNet, but you know, DigitalOcean, Vulture, over in Europe, there's OVH Cloud and, and Hetzner and so on. They add up to about 28% of the market. They're the fourth largest cloud collectively, right? And I'll talk a little bit about why people are looking for alternatives to those big public cloud platforms. Gary, you asked about bare metal cloud, and I want to hit on that because this is really a great illustration of it. So that server level that I was explaining before, where we deliver the servers for the client and they run everything else on top of it. We have thousands and thousands of servers deployed around the world, and these servers are deployed just like customers are used to deploying in the public cloud, but they're not virtual servers, they're physical dedicated servers. And so, I don't know, you probably can't see the small type there, but on the right is what our, our GUI interface looks like, you know, where people can come and get, they can select exactly the type of server they want to spin up, how many CPU cores does it have, what processing speed, how much RAM, everything else you're used to thinking about for a machine, what operating system they want it to run on, right? And they can either spin it up right here on our web interface, and it's up in minutes, and it's theirs. They can pay for it by the hour, or by the month, or by the year, right? Um, or they can use the same automation tools that the developers these days are using to provision all sorts of services in the virtual world, in the, in the virtual cloud. This is totally changing the paradigm for our clients, right? You see where I've got some bullet points here about why do companies want choices other than the public clouds? Why are these alternative cloud providers taking on so much steam? And by the way, that share where they've grown to the fourth largest, that's double from where it was four years ago. Cool. Because of this phenomenon, right? We have about a minute left. So, okay, yeah. one more slide. Um, so the uh, bottom line is folks are finding the public clouds in some cases either too complicated, uh, they have security concerns, and mostly they have cost concerns. We hear a lot. So essentially we can give them something that's better, cheaper, and faster in, uh, with bare metal. So last thing is, these are some qualifying questions that we could recommend to you. We find a lot of people say to us, selling this stuff is too technical. I find it too intimidating. But, at the, but the, at the core of this are business issues, right, that your clients have. So these are some questions I'd recommend you consider asking your clients. Number one, are you putting any infrastructure in the cloud? This is the first thing we treat, teach all of our sales, sales reps to ask, right? And the answer is either going to be yes or no. If they say either one, if it's yes, has it met your expectations? And oftentimes we find people say no, it hasn't. Well, why not? Now we've got a great conversation going. If they say no, why not? Oftentimes, it's because there's some barrier to the public cloud that they didn't want to go into in the first place, but they still want some of the advantages. We can offer that. When are you due for your next hardware refresh? This is a huge question these days because everybody's used to buying hardware on three to four to five year cycles. They can't get their next hardware refresh today because of the supply chain. We've got a solution for that. Have you ever thought about getting away from managing your own infrastructure? These are the folks that have always done it, always on-prem. And if they say, well, you know, we just we're used to doing it this certain way, you follow up and say, geez, I wonder what it costs to house it and to power it and to cool it and to and keep about the software. 10 seconds left here, so last two questions. Well, I'm gonna pick just one. Okay. Do you have a DevOps team? This is the way the world is working today in terms of deploying infrastructure. If you hear yes, call us. We got smart people that'll help you. Cool. We'll give it up here for PhoenixNap. Thank you.